I'm Taylor Baker, and joining me today is the director of There There, Andrew. I'm going to mess up your last name, but I'm going to try to say Bujalski. Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. That's what is a, that? It's a, well, I don't say it correctly either. You I, don't? Okay. Yeah, I say Bujalski. That's how I grew okay. up saying it. But, uh, you know, if you go to Poland, they'll correct you. Okay. So, Polish last name. Got it. Um, you are here at the festival for There There, which is a, what I think, very intimate character piece that... I just figured out you edited, and I think you did a really um, influential job to the sound. You you made it so that I felt like I was in the midst of these two people, even though these two people weren't actually there together. Could you tell me a little bit about how the project came to fruition, and maybe the any particular choices that came to mind as you were filming it? about how you were going to conjure that experience that made in me at least feel very intimately like I was cemented between these two people, yeah. not just observing them. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's certainly a very strange production. Everything about it is is, is odd, but I think when um, March of 2020, when the world locked down and for a moment there it became impossible to make uh, movies at all, and then, you know, things started to, to uh, loosen up a little bit, but with all these layers of bubbles and all these things. Um, I got interested, I kind of went down a rabbit hole of well, what's what's possible now, what's something, how, how can we how can we take what's difficult and impossible about this moment and um, maybe just use the opportunity to go do something that I think had always interested me. I think, and I'm, I'm at pains because people talk about this a lot as a pandemic project, which is kind of true, but to me it's not about that. Um, to me, we're going to kind of the heart of a cinematic question, which is, I mean, it's always it's always a trick, right? Every time you cut from this person to this person, um, who knows how close together these these things were shot? Who knows what they were actually looking at or thinking in that moment? How many days difference was it? Yeah, yeah. That type of thing. Um, so we just decided to to kind of take that and and run all the way with it, um, and we built a movie in which every Every performer is shot individually, so they're nowhere near their scene partner in these movies, uh, in these in these scenes, these long dialogues, um, and uh, so it's this kind of grand trust fall. And then it's, we're making a movie about trust and about faith. I got I got excited about this oddball way of making a movie. Forgive me, I think I'm rushing through it. I don't know if I'm explaining no, it well, but keep going. Um, but I also wanted to then knowing how strange it would feel to, to do that, and in some ways how strange movies always feel. Yes. Um, I wanted to tell a story about those, about those feelings, about those feelings of um, being, you know, sometimes you're in a conversation with somebody and you, you're not sure if you're in the same room as they are. Uh, so we, we, we pushed that as far as we could. Um, and I love what you're saying about feeling like you're between them, because I think in a way that's maybe the lesson or maybe the thing that I learned from doing it is that ultimately I feel like what I'm watching on screen when you watch two uh, characters talk to each other who are in different rooms but have been sewed together through the art of movie magic um, that they're kind of imagining themselves into existence and I love that about it I love feeling like you're you're in the midst of this mutual imagination project yes there's um there's an intimacy and like a, a level of humanism that feels formally new. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to like make declarative statements to <clears throat> you about the nature of your art, but it does feel like I'm encountering something that that is maybe in its infancy or maybe will never exit its infancy, but it does feel different. It feels formally different. Yes, it's formally very strange. It, I, <laughs> They think it it may well die in the cradle, <laughs> but uh, you know we 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 did it once, and I, and it's a it's a unique experience certainly to make, but I think also to watch. It was it was uh, an adventure for sure. Did you have um, I guess in the project? Did you have a level of focus towards like compassion, intimacy, human relationship, or I you know I'm stumbling through some different ideas that I took away obviously, but how? 
did the what what came across to me is this beautiful human intimacy come to you did, did you set out to do that or was it just kind of incidental as the project manifested no of course i mean in some ways i think i i always set out to do that i think that's what excites me about movies but also in very much in particular in this one where i was doing something so perverse um and 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 separating these these performers um it had to be about them reaching for each other we had to do everything we could to be to be creating intimacy because it was such a anti-intimate process that we were engaging in and that 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 is that tension is what the movie is um i needed to, i needed to push against our own boundaries you um i don't remember the name of the type of camera you used for computer chess but mm -hmm. since then it seems to me that you've moved towards digital cinematography um has that changed the way that you are engaging with the frames you're creating or the stories you're telling in a significant way or is it just kind of uh, natural evolution for you i don't know if it's evolution i think it's kind of project by project you know every every time every time you sit down to make something i think it's one of the earliest things i'm i'm considering is what what kind of images what kind of language do we want this to be in and so certainly you know my first few movies were on 16 millimeter and i I love 16 millimeter very much, and I can't I can't fathom having made those any other way. Um, computer chess was extremely medium specific. That was one where I was thinking about using those particular those were uh, analog early analog tube video cameras. That's what um, was the tube video camera yeah. that you can't point at the sun. Right, <laughs> it's the Sony ABC 3260 was the particular uh, model we used there, and I you know I was I was dreaming of working with those cameras before I before I knew the story of that movie. And okay. So to me that was, the movie was built for that kind of image making. Um, and in this case, you know, I don't know that I knew exactly, and we shot this on iPhones, iPhone 12 with the Filmic Pro app. Um, all of our equipment, because it was traveling so much, it was going to wherever the performers were and they were thousands of miles apart. So it all fit in a Pelican case, not much bigger than what you'll have here. Um, we could just ship it around, with little phones in there. Um, and uh, so, I, you know, it's not that I sat down and said, let me write an iPhone movie, but I did think it, it, we wanted something essentially that even though, you know, on set with these actors, you have a micro crew of, you know, somewhere between two and four people. Um, in theory, we wanted it to look and feel as if this is something that a person could have set up their phone alone at home and done. It's not that far from that. Um, so... You know, but then, and once we got into it, that, that the nature of the phone itself and also the nature of how we were doing it, we, I mean, I think, you know, as far as lighting goes, we had, we had less than you guys have here. We were working very bare bones, which led to a lot of opportunities for, for strange image making. And we pushed that a lot in post production, too. So, you know, you're making such a weird movie, you might as well let it, let it look real weird and let that be. Part of, part of the field. You say weird, but it honestly reminded me in some ways of Altman's wonderful film, um, Shortcuts, uh -huh. in which Lily Taylor also sure. was in and is probably one of the best characters, sure. I'll selfishly say. Um, but you, um, you put a camera in these scenes, I forget the name of the actor, but he's having the conversation with Jason Schwartzman. Uh -huh. And you put the phone, I guess, I'll call it a camera, on this like weird coffee table thing that he had his laptop on, on that upper balcony. And it was one of the more unique shots that I think I've seen in all of cinema this year. <laughs> and it, it's just one of those little, you know, eccentricities that kind of makes you either fall in love with the film or perhaps if your sensibilities aren't like mine, uh, be rubbed the wrong way. But I, I mean, shots like that, what, and just dressing a set like that, how did that develop? Uh, well, minimal dressing, you know, we had, we had an art director, but to most of us, on this movie, and there'd be two to four people in the room, but we'd be shooting where that scene with Avi Nash is the actor that was shooting his apartment in Bologna, Italy. I wasn't in Bologna, I was on Zoom. Okay. Um, my director of photography was on Zoom, my, the, the art director was on Zoom, the producers were on Zoom, so there'd be, we'd kind of, we'd work with a few people on the ground there, but, um, so I've never, I've never been to Bologna. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I would see through, we would kind of do a little bit of scouting, um, mm -hmm. Zoom scouting, or, and we'd spend usually a day before the shoot or a half day, we would spend kind of teching everything out, setting up the shots 
seeing what they felt like. So we get to know the space a little bit, and that was a fun one to do in particular because Avi uh, moves around that space so much. Yes. Um, and it was a great little apartment with lots of funny nooks and crannies and that weird double desk thing that he'd that he'd set up. Um, uh, so you know, you kind of work with what. In some ways, in a lot of ways, it reminded me of my my earliest movies where we had we had no money, we couldn't, we had no. Uh, there, were, there was no art director on those movies, so you, you'd kind of walk into a place as it was and say, okay, what is this doing? What does this feel like? You know, is there, is there anything horribly wrong that I need to change? Okay, like, let's move that. Um, is there anything super important that I need to add? But then from there, you just let it be, you let its character inform the character of the scene. Manifest. Um, I, I don't know if this is conscious by you, but I've noticed in your films, m more than many other films, the background kind of becomes its own character. Mm. And it's actually something I've been thinking about with your filmography quite a bit since we set this interview and I was just trying to get myself in the headspace of making sure that I brought my attention to your cinematic grammar. Um, you know, the opening of Support the Girls, you really just let us fall into this Americana of the highway and the retail chain store and the sound, the look, the exhaust, the fumes. Um, computer chess, you have these, these great lingering shots where the inside of the hotel is its own character. Almost the hotel becomes a character, but it is the background, right? And Support the Girls, the, the city that Double Whammies is in, is kind of the background. So um, I, I noticed the background was a character here as well, but the backgrounds, as you've mentioned, are different. Um, can you talk about that at all, or do I make any sense to you? Yeah, well, <laughs> obviously this, this project is such a weird particular case where, um, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me, having made this movie in this very strange way, in the first scene, you have two people waking up in, in bed together and, you know, kind of negotiating this morning after uh, thing. <laughs> but, um, but, so it's as intimate as it gets in some ways, and I, some people I think some people I think can go the whole movie knowing that something strange is happening, but not quite put together what it is. It's not terribly subtle. I mean, you know, Lily Taylor's, well, the walls behind her are white, and the walls behind Len James are green. And um, as you watch the scene, I think if you're if you start to look at it with that with that logical eye, I think you can kind of quickly put together. Okay, this is not they're not in the same room, but that's not really how most people watch movies. You don't you don't. You don't watch it trying to make that kind of sense of a place, usually. Um, so there is this weird cognitive dissonance thing that's happening, and, that, and they never appear in the same shot together, which obviously just from film language is odd. Uh, so the, the place is, 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 is absolutely crucial to this movie, and yet what is the place? The place is, is limbo. You know, I mean, you see, you see Avi Nash out on his... Uh, balcony and you can see Bologna behind him. It, it looks like Bologna. Uh, and then a couple scenes later he's at this bar with the teacher that Molly plays and so if you're, if you're trying to make any kind of logical sense of it, it's like did he fly from Italy for this date? Or it, it, it's, not, it's not really how the movie works and I think even with, with time, you know, there's this odd circular uh, thing to the movie where it's not uh, the last scene you know, I think it all makes sense chronologically, and yet you kind of could just go back to the first scene from there. Um, so it was very much a, a movie about people who are dislocated. So in that sense, I, cu I, couldn't, I couldn't do what I did in you know, something like Support the Girls, where you take a very concrete kind of space, and you say, let's let this be part of the movie. And it's funny, you know, I'm sorry, my, my, I'm wandering now, but no, just think, thinking about movie making in the COVID era and this idea of bubbles, that this was, this was, COVID, I think, was a surprisingly easy adaptation for a lot of Hollywood productions because they were already bubble-based, right? Mm -hmm. It was already about like, let's seal everything off, let's you know, let's protect our stars, let's let's design everything. We've already got funds and insurance negotiations. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so that's all, all that COVID did was add like other more layers of bubble. Just like okay, let's throw another you know, we'll add another thirty million dollars to the budget and we're fine. Um, whereas I think what I've as one thing I've always liked as an indie is that you, you can't you can't shut everything out. And I don't want to shut everything out. And even with art design, you know, I, I kind of like 
performance. I don't want to design everything myself. Or with an actor, I don't. I don't want to design every inch of their performance myself. I want. I want somebody to bring something, and then I want us to work together and try to craft something. Because then you get some, some life to it, and something that's hopefully bigger and better than what's just going to come from my limited imagination. Um, but this was a this was an odd project where we couldn't we couldn't just define a place. We couldn't say, okay, we're gonna get we're gonna let as much bologna into this movie as we can. Because no, we didn't. We let very little bologna in, just enough. Um, we're letting lots of places in, and they and they they're supposed to interact with each other in a, in a you know somewhat alarming way, <laughs> as a somewhat confusing way, um, where you're kind of nowhere. And the phone camera, I think, also you know, just going back to the visuals contributes to that as well. It's an, it's an, it's an odd feeling visual, um, which in some ways I think, we put a credit at the end of the movie, it says, uh, shot on location, anywhere, everywhere, nowhere, and that's kind of, I kind of, maybe because I didn't leave my house while making it, I sort of feel like it's a movie that takes place in a, in a nowhere land. So you didn't leave the house, you did everything by Zoom? I, yeah, my, my part of it, which okay. is a, a very strange way to work. That's that seems very foolish. You had the chance to meet Lily Taylor in person. I, I did, which you fool. ridiculously, <laughs> I still have not. I hope to someday. <laughs> so talented. Mm -hmm. um, there's universality and I think uh, like a, a soft touch to a lot of this film. And you were just talking about how it can kind of end and begin at the same time. And I, I think that's a really fun uh, bookend the way that you did that with Molly Gordon um, coming back into the bar. Um, that, that really added a lot of flavor and character um, that I really enjoyed. But the universality and softness is not common um, even amongst indie films. Is there something, and I, I think it's very present in all your cinema, is there something about you as an artist that you find that you want to communicate about the world or your experience or, or something that, that continuously crops up in these ways where you continually conjure the beautiful and the touching amidst the absurd of the humanity of us all. Oh, I don't know. I, 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 that's, that's a deep question. I don't know. I, you know, I think you certainly want to be useful as a filmmaker, as a human. You want to, you want to, if you're from, if you're going to work on these things, especially these things that are not market driven. Um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fulfilling a need. Nobody's asked me to make these movies. Um, so I think if I'm going to kind of try to offer up something, um, then, then you, I, I guess the, the, the more I can be true to something within me, the more I hope that will mean it will resonate with with somebody else somewhere. Who that person is or how it resonates is always a, a bit of a mystery, but it's, it's exciting when you feel like something's happening. I don't know if I'm answering your question at all, but that was more so, of a, ther a therapy question. I <laughs> couldn't quite get there. Um, I understand that you are somewhere in the process of being a parent now. <laughs> yeah. Have you noticed that it uh, is bleeding over into the way that you're making your projects? Is the stories you're telling at all as a writer director? I would assume so. Editor? Yeah, but no, of course. I, I mean, I think that's it's you know as as profound a uh, shift as you'll ever go through in your life. But uh, so I think it influences everything. But I don't I don't know specifically. I, I you know I, I don't know that I could point to here's the here's the parental alteration. Yeah. Um, the title there there. Mm -hmm. What's it mean? I don't know. You know, it was. A, I'm still getting used to it. We we actually had a kind of uh, very late in the game. We, we we had another working title that we were on for a long time, and then uh, stupid story. But we you know we'd heard about a a big expensive movie coming down the pipeline with a very similar title, and so we were encouraged to get out of their way. Um, I, you know, so I, I I wish I wish it had. It, for me, it's, it just lacks just a little bit of punch. I wish it had a little more punch, but uh, um, but I, but it works on on many. Uh, there's this very direct, uh, of course. We shot it there. We shot it there. So that's nice. Yes. Um, there's uh, the the comfort aspect of it, which I think I'm I'm all for. Um, there is a lot, you know, because it is so much a movie about trust and faith. I think there's also certainly an aspect of comfort in that, or people reaching to 
to try to. I mean, this is the one thing you also you can't do in this movie. It's like nobody can ever put their hands on somebody else. Just, they're not there. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a few more layers you can go to it. I think there's a, there's a Gertrude Stein quote somewhere in there, but uh, it, it is what it is. It's whatever you want to make of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you're aware that when people talk about the hard problem of consciousness, they often describe whether or not there's a there there. Right. And I wondered at, at some level if that was um, working in your title as, as you conjured it, or if uh, yeah, that was just a convenience that I found. I'll take it. <laughs> Um, is there anything about the film that you wish was different? Ha! Um, I, I, I can never do that. I can never engage with that. That kind of, um, you know, I, I think of uh, George Lucas tinkering with Star Wars. And uh, I, I always feel like I'd be very reluctant to do that. If somebody, if you, if you gave me a billion dollars and said, here, you can just change whatever you want to change. I'm, I think I would say no thank you, or you know, can we do something else with this billion dollars? Um, but I feel like, to me, some of, what, some of what's magical about movie making and it's very special about it is that it's a kind of great time tunnel. I mean, when you watch a movie from, uh, whenever it's from, you, know, but we, we, you can watch a movie from 100 years ago and you'll kind of get this extraordinary window into it. You get to you get to travel a hundred years back mm -hmm. watching it. Um, so in a way, everything you make is is a kind of crystallization of when and how and where you were making it, including all the things that may have frustrated you about making it. But once that's once that's there, that's that's part of its soul, for better or worse. So I don't I don't know that I, I have a lot of trouble engaging with the idea of changing something once it's done. Sure, I I didn't necessarily mean to change it, but um. You know, just is there something that you know you wish that you had had the opportunity to do? Or well, not? you always wish that you did it better. You know, I mean, yes. I think that's that. But another nice thing about filming is there's so many, there's so many steps. So, and and I've been very lucky to have this uh, fairly autonomous career and uh, and to, to work on projects where I'm I can shepherd them from you know the first inkling of an idea to the the final tweak and color correct or sound mix or whatever. So at every piece of that, you're not only trying to make something richer and, and add to it and make it better, but you're also trying to cover up your mistakes. You know, when you're when you're on set directing, you're like, oh my god, this script is horrible. Like, let's what, how can we fix this? And then when you're editing, you you look at all this footage you shot and you go, what the fuck was I thinking? Let's sweep this under the carpet. So there, it, there's always a lot of a lot of that in real time. Mm -hmm. Um, it's almost all a, uh, an effort to kind of fix what, what went wrong, you know, when you were working on it yesterday. Um, but once it's done, then, then you walk away. Yeah. walk away. Is there a recent film you've seen that you would recommend to people that may be uh, unorthodox? Or, um, you know, just something that you fell in love with that you want to share? Probably. I'm so sorry I'm blanking that. It's, uh, it's been nice because one of the strangest things about COVID for me was as a lifelong uh, compulsive movie goer, you know, somebody who a, a lot of my structure of my life was built around going to the theater. I've never really enjoyed watching movies at, at home. I don't, I don't do it much, and I did it much during COVID, so I kind of cold turkey for okay. most of a, a year, however long that was. I was pretty cautious. Um, and uh, so it's been great to be back. And it's been great to be taking in some new stuff and trying to catch up with some old repertory stuff, but I'm but I'm blanking on anything in particular. I'm okay. so sorry. Do you have an old film that you would recommend to people that you're a fan of? There's there's millions of them. There are, but there's only one you. Right. This so this is too stressful. <laughs> How can I pick one movie from all the cinema? Well, you're not picking the best. You're just picking a movie, a movie. that you think is I good. Wish, I wish I wish I had a good fun. one. It would be great to come up with some. Well, I'd love to do something that's particularly relevant to this conversation. And yet, what is it? I don't know. Maybe if I had the coffee before we talked, <laughs> it would it would lead to mind. Uh, what do you like? What do you recommend? What do I like? What do I recommend? Uh, well, I'll recommend there. There. I will also recommend for 
people that are eccentric and want to see different versions of what a frame looks like, mm -hmm. computer chess, it really, I'm still processing, I just watched uh -huh. it yesterday. Um, but uh, Devils on the Doorstep is something that I just watched. What's that? Um, it came out in 2000, it is banned in China from mm -hmm. director Zhang Wen. It's over two hours long, and it is one of the most, um, like, exploratory of philosophical ideas like xenophobia and nationalism in the midst of World War II that I've ever seen. It's very beautiful. Um, it's a black and white film, um, and it's about uh, some Japanese prisoners in China while that Chinese village is occupied by Japan. Uh -huh. And there's a, there's a Chekhov's gun situation happening, and it's a very engrossing watch, and it's very beautiful. So if you have the chance, uh, good luck. It's not streaming anywhere. Right. You can't get it anywhere, but Scarecrow Video does lend it in the mail. Does Scarecrow Video still exist? Yes. That's amazing. And they uh, lend things through the mail now. That's incredible. Good for y'all. Um, Austin, we, we lost our video stores, which have been around forever. Oh, no. uh, and then in, in COVID times, they, Vulcan and I Love Video finally finally went down, alas. I'm sorry to hear that. That's okay. um, well, do you have a release date that you can share for there, there, or a VOD date or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, uh, November 18th. November 18th. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know that we need to wrap up. So is there any final anything that you would like to share? Thank you so much. That's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.